Hello there. I'm Ali Haji on Crux Investor, uh, CEO and Director of Ion Energy. Uh, we trade on the TSX Venture under ticker Ion, uh, Ion GF on OTCQB, and 5YB over in Frankfurt. We are an early stage lithium explorer and developer in Mongolia. We control 110,000 hectares of highly prospective brine licenses within the close proximity of the largest consumer on the planet, that being China. Right, Ali, um, good to have you back on and good to see you again. Um, you've been sort of traveling the world at various conferences and the like. What, what's, the, what's the main feedback to you? I think the main feedback is, uh, you know, we, we've sort of been uh, forgotten uh, for the most part. And I think that's a result of uh, not having the necessary skill set for brine exploration uh, in Mongolia. Being first movers, of course, we have uh, a bit of a, a gap uh, that we're looking to fill, if you will. And so uh, we've had uh, less of a rally uh, with respect to the, the other lithium players in, in, in the world, uh, specifically in LATAM, that have the necessary skill set. Uh, but more and more, I think people are recognizing that we are vastly undervalued. We have a team that can execute. We've built a, a very strong team of uh, technical experts alongside strategic experts. Uh, that will allow us to, to, to further de-risk and uh, better understand our assets. So being a fully funded company, I think that's important to note. We're not out here looking for equity. Uh, we have enough to, to, to keep us going for the next 18 to 24 months. Uh, we are just getting started with respect to access to country. Okay, so what do you, what do, you do about it in an environment like this, right? It's pretty, pretty tough out there. It's been brutal um, in all markets. You know, natural resource not immune to that either. Um, share charts all look the same. It's been downward pressure all the way. You, you put out um, a press release recently, you know, good, good, good grades, right? Um, you know, collected a, 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 like from a, from, a, from a pool over there. But, you know, you're, you put that out into a market that just goes, I don't care. So what do you do? How are you spending your time? Yeah, it, it's been tough. Uh, you know, you could put out uh, fantastic news. I could put out a resource tomorrow that says that we have 20 million ton plus LC equivalent. Um, and the market will be very soft to react. Uh, you know, the, the sort of uh, um, uh, economic factors that, that, that are uh, affecting uh, the vast majority of uh, companies as well as uh, investor uh, sentiment around the world uh, continue to, to, to be a bit of a, an issue, to say the least. Um, but as far as uh, the fundamentals of the company are concerned, being funded, I think, you know, we're, we're in a stage now where um, folks are a bit reluctant to invest. Uh, people have liquidity issues. They're seeing a bit of inflation. Uh, but as a company that is funded, uh, that is able to, to, to put out results, as you mentioned, 918 milligrams per liter on surface, that is significant. Uh, you look at companies like Lithium Americas, Neo Lithium, and a number of others uh, that collected those Coke bottle samples on surface, they're in and around that range. So we're, we're you know, at a market cap of sub 20 million Canadian today, uh, Lithium America is about $5 billion. Neo Lithium sold for $960 million to Zijin. Uh, these, are, these are numbers that, that don't quite um, uh, show the true image or, or reflect accurately what we are seeing on surface. So uh, it, it, is, it is tough going. Uh, it, is, it is not always pleasant when you put out good news and the market doesn't quite react. Uh, but importantly, I think you, know, you, you put your head down and, and you realize that you've built a team around you that is quite significant. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you are funded. And so you're not at the, the mercy of the market with respect to any capital raise, and you just continue to execute. Um, so, so that's where we are today. It's been, uh, as you said, a lot of travel, uh, a lot of storytelling, uh, but that's important. I think it's important for people to understand where the value proposition is uh, and how we compare it to our peers. Okay, well, talk to me about this, okay? Uh, you, you keep, you've said you're funded several times in the, in the past few minutes, right? You're funded. I want to know you're funded to do what? What exactly will you be doing, which will allow you to go and tell that story at the, at these various conferences, um, that you've been attending so far and will continue to attend this year because they, they need data. They need information to be able to say, Hey, maybe you're like, um, Lithium Americas. Um, I, yes, I got that the right way around, I think. Um, you know, may, may, maybe you could be the next core cool lithium. Maybe you could be the next Sigma lithium. You know, you, you've got to give them reason to believe. So what are you doing with your, this fully funded budget of yours? Fantastic question, Matthew. And, and we, we have drilled in excess of 300 holes on both our assets. So we've drilled uh, on Baba Yol, we drilled 300 holes across an 81,000 hectare license. Uh, that is important to note because 81,000 hectares is about five times the size of Vancouver. 
obviously, when we did that drilling program, we didn't have the necessary skill set in country to, to help expand our assets, but we had an opportunity to scratch the surface. On Urgak Naran, we put in 72 holes. We've done 88 line kilometers of geophysics and TEM. What that allows us to determine is where the monitoring wells go in. So the monitoring wells will allow you to measure your flow rates. They will allow you to measure your average grade. And ultimately, based on the rudimentary calculations that would be um, average grade versus volume, you have an early resource indication. We've seen time and time again that companies around the world have gone out there with early resource indications and their valuations have just popped, to say the least. So for us, we have enough capital today to ensure that we have an early resource indication on Urgaknaran uh, by the end of this year. Uh, on Babayul, we have an opportunity to ensure that we are targeting where the anomalies are the highest in order to determine an early resource indication there as well. So uh, to answer your question, Matthew, I think um, with respect to the capital that we have today, we are well-funded to allow us to not only allow, uh, not only allow the company to get to an early resource indication on Rogak Naran, but uh, expand and, and better understand uh, Baba Yul. Uh, but as you start to see the equity price increase um, as a result of these results, and you know the market is, 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 is nobody's sort of, uh, uh, nobody can quite control where that goes. Uh, but if we do start to, to, to accelerate based on our results and our, our equity price does increase, there are warrants that would convert that further capitalize the company. So those warrants are priced at 40 cents. Those expire in uh, August uh, of this year. Those are bringing in about $3.6 million. We have 70 cent warrants that expire in 2024 that would bring in an additional $8.5 million. So you're looking at about $11.5 million run rate across the company in terms of what we could potentially raise if we were to convert those warrants. Beyond that, we continue to look at uh, strategics as being partners of ours to allow us to, to better understand not only the assets, but the potential extraction methodologies or technologies uh, that would be used to bring these assets to production. So I think uh, we're in a healthy state at this time. The markets, once again, <laughs> are um, nobody's guess. Well, no, it, it, it's, it's tough markets for sure, but that, that's why it's really important that you stay in control of what you can stay in control of, right? So I want to come back to something you said there. So, you know, we've got this, you know, large land packages and we've done lots and lots of drilling, right? I, I, kind of in a very meaningful way, I'm less interested in the size of the land package and more interested in, in the data that comes out, the results that come out of that, which inform me and say, right, okay, where we have drilled, we've got this sort of, this, this sort of, um, um, uh, these sorts of results. They look quite good, and I think we can go and replicate these elsewhere, right? So that that okay, good. I like that. Um, but you you haven't you know you haven't got much money today to do anything kind of aggressive, and maybe in this in, in environment you don't want to do that. Maybe it's, it's it's a little bit of hunker down and have con con conversations which which interest investors uh, or strategics. And I'm interested in what the nature of those conversations are because. Um, you have talked in the past about maybe looking at listing on AIM. You've got the option of talking to strategics in country and I suspect out of country. You, you know, Lithium's very, very popular. I've na named a few companies there who've done you know ex exceedingly well, but you, you've got to go through a process here and excite people. And the first thing that you said to me in terms of the feedback was, hey, don't have the skill sets in Mongolia to do this, so we're not so sure Mongolia is a place we want, we, we want to invest, I think, broadly, right? So how do you get over so that? That's, no, so so I, would, I, I will answer all those questions, Matthew, and I, I think what you've said is with respect to the skill set, uh, you know, I have an obligation to my shareholders. Uh, we raised capital in February of last year that funded the company quite significantly. Um, I did not ensure that we went out or I did not even promote the fact that we would potentially be doing a, a full scale sort of exploration program until we had access to country. In February of this year, uh, Don Haynes, uh, who is an individual that is, is very well known in the lithium space, Dr. Mark King, who is the qualified person at, at NEO, as I mentioned, when it was sold to Zijin, 
Uh, him and I and uh, Don worked with our team in country to define an exploration program that we could conduct in country that would be validated or to the, to, to the standards that you would expect for a lithium company uh, anywhere else in the world. So in February, we started those conversations. We went out to site. Uh, we drilled a, a number of holes on, on, on uh, Rugat Naran, as I've mentioned, and those were done to hydrogeological sampling methodologies. And what that means is you drill the hole, you hit the water table, you drill two more meters. You drill a hole, you hit basement, you stop. When you do hit the water table, you're bailing out those holes, waiting 24 hours for them to refill, and then collecting the brine samples for assaying. So very, very sort of you know calculated and, and, and strategic, uh, or even you know industry recognized um, uh, sampling and, and assaying methods on on Baba on Urgat Naran. I beg your pardon. And with respect to uh, the skill set in country, we've now been able to train them, and having gone there and seen the skill set that is in country, including the likes of uh, Water Management LLC, which is run by Togos Seinbayar. Uh, Togos has worked on uh, a number of different projects uh, from a hydrogeological sampling uh, perspective, including Rio Tinto. Uh, so, so they've worked for, for world-class companies in Mongolia. They understand uh, a number of the, uh, of the hydrogeological sampling uh, methodologies. But of course, Brian has been something that Mongolia has never gone out there and looked for. But having looked at where Mongolia lies in the great Asian endoheric basin, Having looked at the assets that we see in terms of the fault lines and the volcanic rock in the region and those contained basins, it's indicative of what you would find in, in Argentina, Chile, and uh, Bolivia. And so we're replicating the work that has been done on that side of the world in Mongolia today. As far as strategics are involved, we are working with a number of strategics, uh, not only Asian, but also European and LATAM centric. So th there is a fair bit of interest there. We we've seen the likes of, of major uh, LATAM companies, which will not be named, visit Mongolia to look for uh, either lithium or copper. Now, in terms of uh, uh, those strategic relationships, what, what we hope to achieve there is, you know, we, we've been unequivocal from day one. Ion Energy is not a company that will bring lithium assets to production. It's a company that will look to partner with strategics. Our proximity to those strategics that are, con are producing the lithium carbonate equivalent or otherwise for the battery market in Asia, which is larger than anywhere else in the world, uh, we do have NDAs in place and we will be sharing our data with them. We will ensure that we bring at least one, uh, if not two of them, uh, as, as, as part of our, our shareholder base in, 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 uh, in due course. Right. So I need to, um, like I say, I want to get into the, what that conversation was like, you said to me, I didn't say it, you said it. They think you don't have the skill sets, whether it be as a, by country or by region, you're not able to get the skill sets you want. You're arguing the case. Well, actually, we do. There's lots of places and case studies that we can learn from, and, and, and we do. So the conversations that you've had on your travels, do you think that those investors are now set straight? Do you think that are you viewed differently? And, and what have they done about it? I've you know, seen a little pop in your price recently. So Yeah, a little pop. Yeah, exactly. So, so they do recognize now that we've brought on, uh, you know, people that, that understand uh, the industry that have had a number of successes in terms of exits and, and otherwise. Um, and so that's that's a thing that, that the market is now recognizing, I would say. Uh, they know that we've built a team that, that consists of individuals that um, ha have built uh, significant organizations, but also put together resources and ultimately exited. And so um, the market today has been soft, as we've said. So in terms of that skill set, which you continue to, 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 to bring up, which I continue to bring up as well, uh, that skill set uh, is one that was lacking in that region. But now we're in this position where we have the necessary skill set. And I think it's important for our viewers to note that uh, as a group of companies, we've had uh, you know, a producing asset come online in, in Mongolia in the gold space. We've had an exit in the coal space. We're now currently looking at copper in the region as well. Rio Tinto has just doubled down on their investment, close to $5 billion going back into Mongolia in terms of uh, the Oyu Tolgoi mine. You also have the likes of Zijin, a uh, Chinese company that, uh, you know, historically the Chinese were, were uh, I wouldn't say reluctant, but, but there was a bit of uh, friction with respect to how they would invest in country. And so you're seeing Zijin now put $26 million into Xanadu mines, which is a copper explorer there. So, so the economy truly is opening up. Uh, and here at PDAC, uh, which is being hosted in about two days time in Toronto, uh, we're hosting the Mongolian delegation. Yeah, you know, the, we, we've seen the vast majority of, of, of government now come in as, as uh, the, the younger guard, if you will. Uh, the old guard is now exited. Uh, 
a lot of capital uh, capitalistic mindsets, uh, a lot of folks that uh, see Mongolia as an opportunity that would allow the GDP and ultimately the, the country to, to progress. So the skill set is coming in. Uh, we're seeing more and more strategics come in. We're seeing uh, a lot of uh, cooperation from the government. And I think we're at a stage now where you know Mongolia truly has an opportunity to shine. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm a buyer of Mongolia. Okay. We, we've had lots of conversations about Mongolia. Um, let's go back to the company. Obviously, tr tricky times. You had a little pop recently, tricky times um, ahead. You, you talked fully funded to kind of do what you need to do in the, in this environment. You, you may get some money through from warrants, 40 cent warrants, 36 today. Um, it's pretty close. So let, let, let's say that happens. Do you need to go and list on AIM? So the, the AIM listing is being contemplated for a number of reasons. Um, one, primarily, if you look at the company cap table today, we're, we're held 25% uh, you know, management and insiders. Uh, we will never sell, assign, or transfer our shares. Uh, we continue to be buyers on market. Uh, so, so if you look at the SETI reports, we continue to buy on market. Uh, the rest of the holders are, are family offices. They are um, a number of uh, uh, institutional funds, including you know, US Global, you have uh, uh, Delbrook, you have uh, Maxit Capital. So a number of funds that are sticky, long money that believe in our story. And as a result of that, um, you have a number of shares that are held in uh, essentially what would be deemed um, non-liquid uh, type holdings. And, and so liquidity for us as a company has been lacking. With respect to what we did with the, the bought deal last year, you know, we announced $3 million, we, we took 5.75, we had demand for 10. Uh, we didn't want to overly dilute, but we wanted to ensure that we're bringing in the right players. Not one of those funds or institutions has looked to sell. They continue to believe in the story, but the liquidity from a retail perspective is where we lack. And so the AIM listing is being contemplated in order to bring in some retail money that allows us to, one, settle in Canada, do a list in the UK, but build some liquidity into our share price. And if you look at the AIM uh, exchange today, I think uh, there are a number of organizations, so a number is probably a, a, a very gracious word, but there's a couple of, of lithium organizations that, that are trading there. Uh, that have had massive success and 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 upside in terms of uh, what they've been able to accomplish with respect to their assets, and and I think for us, uh, it's one worth contemplating. It's one that we are we are considering, uh, but we have to ensure that we're doing what's best for our shareholders. It has to be done at a premium to the last raise, um, and obviously costs have to be uh, kept quite low. Our goal is to put the the, the capital that the company raises into the ground. Yeah, it's not for regulatory issues or, or or anything else of that nature. Well, it's an important point you raised there because the the, the cost of listing um, in London is somewhere between five hundred and seven hundred fifty thousand pounds, right? And the ongoing costs, right? You've got right ongoing costs that for a company of your size, that that's quite a meaningful commitment. And you, I guess, you'd have expectations or at least want some sort of certainty of about what the what the UK market could do for you. How do, how do you get comfortable with that? What, what, what's the, what's the, what do the conversations need to look like? What would you need to see happening to say, well, do you know what? That might be the best op option for us. Well, I was in London in uh, November um, for, for a bit uh, and then into December. And then I was back there about uh, a month ago before mining in Daba. And, uh, uh, you know, we've had conversations with the brokers. Uh, we, we've talked to the, the various analysts uh, that, that would potentially put in 80% of that retail money. Uh, we're working with some institutions there that uh, uh, would be deemed, uh, you know, they could provide coverage uh, for the company, which is which is important. Uh, if a bank were to cover us, I think they have a target uh, price. That's obviously important. Currently, we have paid research. Um, so we've had those conversations. I think in terms of the pricing, uh, uh, that has been committed to. Uh, it is at a premium to the to our last raise, which is quite encouraging. Uh, but again, it's uh, it, it, it's a it's very much a discovery exercise at this time. It's one that I'm having conversations with folks that have contemplated it or actually uh, concluded uh, any listing. And uh, as of last week, uh, you know, I had some some very good conversations with uh, uh, an individual that was part of a. Uh, a lithium company that very recently exited, which I will not name again. But uh, his advice to me was, um, if you're going to do it, make sure you bring in a big sum. Now, the, the flip side of that is you are diluting existing shareholders. Yes, it's at a premium. And yes, it supports your, your, uh, your sort of uh, uh, 
value proposition, but also your, your firepower with respect to what you can do from an exploration and, and de-risking perspective. But th these are things that we are contemplating. So uh, I'm not going to commit uh, yay or nay at this time, uh, Matthew, but uh, I will tell you that it's something that we are contemplating. Okay, no, that's fair enough. I, I, I think people are very reluctant to kind of commit to anything at the moment, whether, whether it be raising money, listing economic studies until they see what, what this market's going to do. Um, I mean, to, I mean, to that end, right? Are you with the with the team in country operationally? They are tasked with doing what? What 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 do they need to give you to help you with these conversations? The team in country in, in Mongolia or the UK? yeah Mongolia Mongolia. So the folks in Mongolia, you know, what they're tasked with is is a number of things. One, ensuring that uh, we have the right uh, individuals to do the hydrogeological sampling, which is a very sort of new protocol, if you will, with respect to Brian. Um, because they've never actually done that, but we have now trained them on the back of our site visit. And so that's important. Uh, but between Enki, who's a, a director of ours, and Tushin Kishik Surin, uh, and uh, Mark King, as well as Don Haynes, over the last visit, I think you know, we've, we've looked at Mongolia as a nation, we've looked at uh, the potential for uh, additional consolidation uh, with respect to assets in country, and uh, we continue to, to evaluate those. Uh, we've spent a fair bit of time looking at uh, the specific geology uh, across the, the country as well. But I think being first movers in the lithium space, uh, for us, you know, having founded the company in 2017, having listed in 2020, our first asset was granted in 2019, our second asset was granted in 2021. Um, with respect to the government and their support, we, we've also seen that uh, you know, they have been quite uh, forward with respect to supporting what we're doing. Uh, we've also seen that uh, we are now hosting them here at PDAC in about a, a few days' time as well. So we are first movers. That gives us an advantage over uh, a number of other organizations. So our goal in Mongolia today, given the skill set that we've built, the team that we've built, and the relationship that we have with government, is to continue to look for um, um, results on our assets, which obviously we've done a fair bit of due diligence on before we, we, we sort of acquired them on the lithium front. Uh, but also beyond that, uh, continue to look for other opportunities in country where we have an ability to, to add to our, our hectorage as well as our resource, our potential resource. So we've seen, as I've mentioned, I think core lithium, sigma lithium, um, obviously Albemarle, SKM, all, all the big guys um, are you know, cracking on. They're, 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 they're move, moving ahead. They're getting, they've got the money that they need to kind of get into production. Are you at all nervous as an explorer or you know, want, want to be developer um, of what the market is going to look like going forward? We've seen supply demand fundamentals, you know, massive gap delta between demand and supply mm -hmm. on every single PowerPoint um, when, when, when companies come and talk to us. But how do you engineer and insert yourself into that ecosystem um, from where you are today? Do you have to get the strategy right today as to who you partner with? Is a, a signature with a strategic partner Actually, more important than perhaps one realizes today, if that's you know your your funding routes, because it kind of it kind of def defi it def will define you, won't it? Yeah, you're absolutely right, and I, I think what's important to note uh, on that basis is the fact that uh, you have the likes of uh, refiners that have uh, sort of DLE operations, which uh, I think uh, you and I chatted about before we hopped on here. Uh, but there's also the evaporation bond perspective. There are uh, battery manufacturers. There are vehicle manufacturers, there are storage manufacturers, there, there's a whole sort of uh, gamut uh, with respect to the ultimate uh, supply chain. Uh, so you're either going in with uh, concentrate or you're going in with uh, somebody that refines or you're going in with somebody that, that, that manufactures those batteries. Um, and, and from a macro perspective, Matthew, I, I'll touch on this very quickly, you know, the, the supply perspective is, is, is quite limited. So, so the prices have run up to 75, 76, 80,000 per ton. Uh, this is not sustainable in our view. Um, at these prices, you know, the equivalent of a Mini Cooper that would be electric would cost upwards of 100,000 US. No matter how much money print, uh, is being printed by the governments, uh, you know, you cannot subsidize or incentivize that, let alone the inflation that's going on in the world today. So the prices do have to come down. Uh, and, and, and it's our belief that they would be in and around the, the 16 to $24,000 mark per, per ton. Uh, as opposed to what we're seeing today. Uh, with respect to the strategics we're working on, and, and you're absolutely right, uh, you know, we see this as an opportunity to, to partner with 
the right strategics in the right region. Uh, the the Albemarle's of the world, and, and including the Teslas now looking at, at acquiring mining licenses and, and ultimately being miners, tells you that there is a supply glut that needs to be filled. Albemarle is, is pressing on. Companies like Zijin, who have never been in the lithium space, are now acquiring companies like Neolithium and, and, and what have you. So the, the space is changing. Uh, the space is one that is... Uh, um, uh, quite dynamic in nature. I think uh, as far as we're concerned with respect to our proximity to market, uh, given uh, China does consume the vast majority of the lithium on the planet, our goal, um, as you've rightly pointed out, is you know we, we will continue to, to explore. We will continue to arrive at an early resource indication. And at which point we will look to a partner in any, any sort of uh, level of that supply chain uh, that, that will ultimately uh, uh, work with us uh, to, to bring these assets uh, into production. So Ion is, is is very much early days today, but as far as the the strategics, we have uh, a mixed uh, bag of uh, strategics that we have an NDA with today, and uh, we hope to to be able to announce something uh, in short order.